and welcome to another episode of The Hollywood Knitter. My name is Allison. You can find me as Allison1031 on Ravelry and Instagram. I am recording from my house in Los Angeles, California on a beautiful Sunday, January 16th, 2022. Yes, it has only been like two weeks since my last video, but I felt the urge to podcast and who am I to say no? That's kind of how it goes with me, I guess. Sometimes you get months in between, sometimes you get weeks. That's just the way it is. Uh, we are in the middle of a three-day weekend here in the United States. We have Martin Luther King Day celebrated tomorrow. I luckily have it off. It's, it's a government holiday, uh, though my project is working, so some of my some of my guys are get to work the holiday, but I, alas, I'm not that sad about it, but I don't get to work the holiday, which is fine. <laughs> so I get a three-day weekend, so that's awesome. Anyways, uh, I have a few things to share, some knitting, some what's been going on, and just some general life updates. So I thought I would come in here. I'm in not a new spot. I'm in a different location in the um, kind of guest room. We did do some of what I had wanted to do or started to kind of turn it more into a guest room or craft room. And so this is one of the seats I bought that comes out from Wayfair. And it, it folds out into a like a single bed if someone needed to. It is pretty firm though. That was, it is very firm. Luckily the first person to use it will be my mother and she loves like the harder the bed, the better in her mind. Not me, but that's her. But yeah, other than that, kind of just taking it easy. Um, I, I would say I'm back in lockdown, but I guess I really never really left that much, you know, pretty much a homebody anyways. And so it's work and home, work and home with a few errands in. So not really much has changed too much in the pandemic. Um, but doing my part, staying home. But let's let's talk about knitting. Everybody talks about that pandemic. Um, I have two things I finished since I uh, in the last two weeks. Uh, one um, is my second pair of Advent. I'm calling these my 2021 Advent shorty socks, and these are for my mother. And these were from the leftover I had from my Advent socks from Kirby Werby's 2020 Shitty Creek colorway. So I used all of the uh, remaining yarn that I had colored yarn. And then the gray is Miss Babs Tart and Pewter that I had left over from the sweater. And yeah, I didn't take out my sock blockers, but two perfect pairs. Two perfect pairs, two perfect socks, one per one pair. So these will go into the gift box to give my mom either when she comes or for Christmas. And I think they're cute and they are sparkly. Can't really tell. They're pretty subtle sparkle, not a ton. But it was nice. First first project off the needles this year was a pair of socks. The second um, project I finished, which is actually one of my Make Nine projects, you know, some of those hats in this is... Um, a, the, called the Norm, Nona Rosalia's Took by Nina Hart. And it was a free pattern. And this is just some patents, not patents, premier yarns every day in pink that I don't even know where I picked up. I must've picked it up for a baby project. It is a little, well, actually would fit. I made it intending it for my niece who is a toddler. Um, so I did kind of the smaller size and I think it will fit. It will just not be, it will be a little looser on her. And I used almost all of it. And it's a very simple stitch with kind of a, it's kind of got a cool little, what am I trying to say? Like a butterfly stitch. Um, pretty easy. Very pink. It's got a folded over brim. So it should be warm. And then it's obviously acrylic. So, oh, no, let's see here. Um, obviously acrylic. So very easy for her. Hopefully, I don't know if she likes pink or not. She's two. Um, so my sister likes pink, so I know. I don't think she's an anti-pink kid yet. My other niece, my middle niece, is anti-pink at the moment. She's going through a, not a goth, true goth stage, but definitely a black stage, let's say. So those are my two projects I finished. Off to a cool little start for 2022. Um, and getting some stuff out of the stash, which I look. I also have... I know I talked to you about last time I actually re-knit the heels and cuffs of the pair of socks that were too loose for my stripey pair, but I'm not really going to show you that. I showed you them last time. I said I 
that they had a little too much heel and so I did rip them back and remove um, some of the heel which was good and now they fit better now let's talk about whips so my big whip that I have been working on consciously and so I am now through four color repeats is my Ashland sweater by Julie Hoover and this is an O wool's cuter mushroom I mean not mushroom mushroom feldspar and fowler told but well, I can't really see the top one. These are the four color stripes. So that green, then that pattern, then that pattern. And then let's see if I can curl this up to you see. Oh, there you go. The last one. And this is all the body. And so it's from the bottom up. So I have finished all of the hip decreases. Um, and now I have uh, the straight section for the waist and then I'll have some bust decreases. Um, yeah decreases they're all decreases it's actually it's intended to be a longer sweater um so you start really wide at the bottom and you do some decreases for the waist and then kind of go up and then do a little bit more decrease um one increase row for the bust so um tended to be a boxy i'm hoping uh, it looks to be boxy and yeah so um making myself work on it it's it's not the first thing i'm reaching for these days let's just say but I do definitely want to get it off the needles. It is nice when you start tending there and I'm in, I'm in an in between, I'm in an easy section. So I'm in the, the gray section where it's just round and round. And then the color section takes a little time. So my goal hopefully is to do kind of one of these stripes a week or more. I don't know. As I said, I just want to keep going on it. Um, and get it done as my first sweater and it definitely like it can see some puckery it definitely needs a good block when I when I do it but yeah overall I'm happy with it and it's going it's gonna be a slog as I said because it's fingering weight it's a large sweater and yeah it just is the other thing that's my other project is I finished my first knitted knocker for this year this is in Cascade Yarns Ultra Pima DK. And this is probably the blush or the rose colorway. I'm not sure which one. So, um, and this is about 25 grams. So I should get four of these per skein. I have two skeins. So my goal is eight of these before I attend the Knitted Rockers retreat in April. So I should be on that. I'm gonna try to do like one a week. They're really fast. Um, I mean, relatively, they don't take that long. I actually made this my, or I tried to make it my at work knitting for meetings. I'm really, really trying to knit during meetings. So I do not, not pay attention. And, um, it was not exactly mindless enough for that. I really just need to in the round. I thought it's relatively simple. I've done it many times. I have the pattern memorized, but it's still, it still wasn't quite mindless enough for me to be paying attention to a meeting and knitting. So I will, uh, I cast on another project yesterday to be that. Um, I had a few, I had a few project bags with, um, my next projects already in them. So I have a pair of my next sock yarn already wound up like two hats. And so I just picked this hat cause it's going to be another Helix hat, which is by Jessica Rose. And it's a stash busting hat that I did. And it's going to be a charity hat and it's just round and round three color stripes that go up so these are all dk stripe dk scraps i have this scrap and this scrap and then more just random scraps so it's going to be kind of a blushy pink hat um that will be a charity hat and that is definitely you know you just knit across one drop one color go to the next color knit across drop one that's kind of my list knitting so this is going to become my first project and I'm hoping to finish it, you know, next week or two and use it to primarily focus on meetings at work. Now, the big project. Oh my God. And I love it so much. So I told you I'd been contemplating or I was going to start a new crochet project with my scraps. And I showed you the stitch kind of my, my, uh, here, let me pull this up. So I pull big loop. Um, and I started it. So I'm knitting it on a four millimeter. So here's my little hook. Um, I picked this like a whole set of these hooks up on Amazon with a little bag. Um, and they're, they're super just, you know, squishy, comfortable, easy. 
And this is how far I've gone in two weeks. Oof, I just pulled that. Da, da, da. I love it. Do you see it? Do you see the beautifulness? I've already got like, what is this? Like seven inches. So I calculated I need to do roughly six inches a month to finish in a year. This is definitely going to be a single year project because it is super fast, so easy. And all I'm doing is holding fingering weight held double scraps. And I am roughly trying to do, and you can kind of see it, um, my, my, uh, official, originally I was doing, um, two dark together, then a dark and a light, and then two light. And then I did, and they were doing two rows of those and alternating. But then I realized I was changing from the light to the dark on, on the same side. So it was not that when you're weaving in the ends, but it was just going to be, I thought, let's do three rows. So you're alternating when you're switching. So now I've just switched. I didn't go back. I didn't rip back. You're not going to be able to see it that much, but now I'm doing that three. So I'm doing right now I'm in a light light. So these are my two yarns. Um, and I'll do three rows of that. And if I am about to run out of this yellow, so I'll pick up, like, I just have a basket here of the scraps. And I have a lot more that I haven't. So I'd pick up like this one and start doing it in. I already weaved in my ends for the first ones, but this is what it looks like just mid row. Um, I'm holding them together for, cause it's, you're not really going to see it. So I'm, hol I'm holding, um, the yarns together, um, for a few stitch, not even that much of a stitch to kind of do it. And then I'm weaving it. Um, so you can't see it. So yeah, look at it. Love it. Cannot wait to see this. Uh, I love the texture because I didn't want anything with really holes. You can see this kind of, I think it's called the moss stitch and it is super simple. I'm not an awesome crocheter, but all this is, is single crochet and chain. That's it. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single one crochet. When you go back, you single crochet into the chain one space that you left below. So it all gets filled up. Just love it. So yeah, so super excited with that. Um, actually, you know, making myself work on my other projects is kind of funny, um, but I'm definitely trying to do that. So I'll be working on my Ashland. Uh, I will, I, I'm like rewarding myself with some crochet, which is funny. Um, but that's how that goes. Rewarding myself with my crochet scrappy blanket. I will not today because it's scrappy Sunday if you watch uh, crazy sock lady um, K so I will do a little work on it today um, it's football day if you're in the United States National Football League so all the wild card games are today I've seen a little bit I think we're on the second wild card game there's another one this afternoon we watched two yesterday and that just means a lot of crafting time for me um what else do I have to share ah I'm gonna share a story so I had mentioned I had cloth moths a while back and, and originally wasn't a big deal. It happens every so often. And then as I went in things, I found more of an infestation, not in my actual yarn, which is great. I keep that in a glass cabinet and plastic bins, nothing there, but in some of where I keep my hats, not my sweaters, luckily, um, and where I keep my shawls, which were kind of in a dark, um, a dark place in my room, let's say. Anyway, still, I'm chill about it. You know, I got some traps. I went through and aired everything out. And what I did in between is I would throw, if I found something with a hole, though it didn't look like it had any active, if, if I have any active um, infestation. Um, and this was when I was, so I thought I got, I, I'd aired everything. But then I took down my shawl to use, or one of my shawls, and I found a hole. And I keep my shawls kind of draped up on the wall uh, in a, uh, it's technically, I think, a tie holder, but it works. I throw my shawls through the, through the big circle holes and it's on my wall. Anyways, I took one down. I noticed a hole and I'm like, oh, well, now I have to take all these ones off because sometimes, I, you know, I have a fair amount of shawls and I don't necessarily all wear them. And found a hole in one of them. And so my thing is like, okay, I'll throw it in the freezer and leave it there for a week or two. And then, you know, shake it out, wash it, and then, um, we'll repair the hole, shake it out, wash it. And that's been working. Um, I haven't seen any active 
um, actual moth flying around in two months. So um, I think I got most of them and, you know, just ever vigilant. Anyways, shawls. That was not that long ago. So I found the shawl and I found a hole in one of my beautiful Brio shawl that I had finished last year that I love in this foliage. I'm trying to show you where the hole is without showing where, where was the hole. It was just a little tiny hole, one little hole. Oh, here it is. This is it. So that was it. Totally repairable. Um, wouldn't be quite the same, but I do have some of the leftover yarn. So I threw it in my freezer. Now I literally just threw it in my freezer because <laughs> it was the first time I did this. My boyfriend's like, why are you throwing knits in the freezer? And now he doesn't think anything like I have a shawl, I have a scarf and we just, you know, shove it in between things. Well, yesterday or the day before it, no, I guess it was yesterday. Um, I looked in there and I noticed that the shawl and I had had the shawl kind of in there was pulled over towards the ice maker. And when I looked at it more, I realized my ice maker had grabbed it. I've never really looked at the innards of my ice maker very much, but it, it's open in the freezer. It's not, I have a, a lower end fridge because I, I had to buy it myself years ago. And so it's like a $500 fridge works just fine for, you know, me. Um, but how it makes ice is it comes in and it has like the tray and fills it up. And then it has some hooks that basically, I guess, go in a circle and pop the ice out. You know, it must go through a revolution based on the, um, based probably I'm guessing on the timer. It fills with water timer by the time it comes through and pops the ice out. Well, um, yeah, apparently I don't know when, but for at least two or three cycles before, it had my, I must have gone in or somebody went into the freezer and shoved the shawl a little closer to it. And so it grabbed the shawl and pulled it into the ice maker and circled around and then pulled it in again, circled around. And yeah, I could not figure out how to make without probably breaking my ice maker, make the hooks release so that I could unwind it. So what I had to do is cut it. Now I have big cut hole in my shawl. I, I brought it to show you. I am obviously, and of course where it is, is across like all of the rows. So I am going to go ahead and I can salvage, salvage this last gold, um, but everything else is is not salvageable because I basically chopped it at the end and yeah <sighs> ice maker versus yarn ice maker one and then I it took a while to freaking pull it out and cut it and pull it and cut it and pull and then I had to run the ice make ice maker cycle because now I have little bits of yarn all in my freezer and I had to go through three ice cycles before I started having ice cubes that weren't coming out with little bits of yarn frozen in them yeah Lesson for you. If you're going to put your stuff in the freezer, put it in a plastic bag so the other things don't happen to it. So yeah, I let it go. I mean, I was sad when it happened, but I was realistic. It was like, it is what it is. It happened. It was my fault. I did it. I put it in there. I didn't realize. But it is sad because I did love the squishy shawl and I hadn't even really gotten to wear it a lot. But yeah. A lesson to you all. Um, otherwise, the last two weeks I've been kind of moving towards some of my 22 goals. I am really excited with happy, not excited. I'm happy with myself. So one of my kind of my unofficial, and I've never done this before, like a word of the year, but this word keeps coming up, and I I literally chant it to myself daily is movement. I have uh, well, I talked about it. You know, times of COVID, I became more sedentary. I'm sure a lot of people did. And so movement is really big for me. And so I've started doing, or and I'm halfway through the 30 day yoga challenge with Adrian and, and yoga with Adrian is an online YouTube instructor. She also has an offsite kind of paid thing, but she has a ton of free yoga videos on YouTube. And every year she does a 30 day challenge where she releases a new video every day. And it's, it's great. Um, what's awesome about it is the videos are 20 to 30 minutes. 
and you're just constantly building up because I, I did yoga occasionally in my twenties, maybe once or twice in my thirties and not since then. And so I'm definitely not the same flexible that I used to be. Definitely not the, the shape I was in my twenties. Um, so it kind of builds upon practice and I definitely have noticed improvement in terms of postures and positioning and heck, even be able to go from downward dog and like pull my leg through for a lunge. Like the first day versus day 15, so much better. So I'm really happy with myself. And if you're looking for a really easy way to get movement and core strength and things, and she is it, very relaxing, very easy instructor. It's not too technical and not too difficult in terms of um, flow. She goes through and you're just, you're improving on your practice every day. And I think I'm going to try to keep this up. Um, for me, what this has meant is pretty much after work, I come home, I might chill for a minute and then I go upstairs and I do, you know, 20 or 30 minutes of yoga before I come down and have dinner and it's working for me. I'm going to slowly try to incorporate more movement throughout the year, but I know for me, I have, I set very high goals for things and then it's very easy to fall off and just stop doing them all. So right now I'm focusing on small movement every day and that's this yoga practice and I have done it every day. It's, it's been great. Um, so we'll see at the end of January what I decide to do, but I think she has a lot of these, um, 30 day programs. And so I was thinking of either restarting the same 30 day program and just seeing how far I've come or maybe doing one of the other ones and just constantly keeping it moving forward. And eventually later this year, I definitely want to add more, um, you know, more strenuous cardio or longer yoga practices. We'll see. But I'm just pleased with myself. It's been a solid two weeks and I've been doing it. The other thing I wanted to mention is this was actually a last year goal and into this year and it has to do with money. Nobody likes to talk about money. Um, but I do want to put out there that I have been not, uh, yeah, I guess intimidated. I've been intimidated. So I am, um, I am in charge of my own finances. I, I have been, I, I do have a partner, but we keep our finances hundred percent separate. So my money is mine. My investments are mine. My, you know, looking forward to retirement is mine and all of that, figuring it out. And so I have, I'm very lucky to have a government job where I will have a pension at my retirement, but I never relied on that. I always did the deferred comp and, you know, throw money into, you know, additional retirement, but I didn't really know what I was doing. You just, you know, here, start with 50 bucks a month and you just say, do you want to be aggressive or not aggressive? And it magically goes into a, some type of fund that somebody, <laughs> I didn't really understand it. And so I wanted to, as I pretty much once I turned 40 and I paid off my student loans and I paid off, I was a hundred percent debt free. I've just been accumulating money and to the point where I have enough that I need to do something with it. And, um, it's, probably been that way for the last two years where I'm like, it's not really growing for me just sitting in a savings account. And I thought, well, maybe I'm saving it for a house payment and that still might be the case, but I, I'm not actively looking for a house. It may happen in the next few years. And in the meantime, I just felt like it's not sitting there and it's not growing, but I was really intimidated on what to do with it. Like stock markets or mutual funds or bonds. Like what, what do all these mean? So I was on Instagram and I can't remember, it, it's another knitting person I follow and she had um, taken this course and had posted about it. And so I had started following this other, this person on, um, on Instagram. And then this November, I finally pulled the trigger and bought her online investing course. And her name is Amanda Holden and she's called Dumpster Die Doggy on Instagram. And she is just a woman who is very passionate about helping other women understand wealth and wealth management and growing your own wealth. She worked, you know, in the kind of private sector for a while in San Francisco and, you know, was helping, as she describes it, I think, old rich men get richer. And instead, she has now gone on her own and is an investing speaker and has this online course and is really passionate about helping, especially women, understand how to create their own wealth. And she has this online course. Um, it's like, I think I got it with a discount, but it's like $200 and it is 15 series of lessons with videos ranging from 30 minutes to an hour and homework and, and guides 
teaching you about wealth and how to set up for retirement and what Roth R R I R A S are, what mutual funds are, what ETFs are, like all this terminology that was very, very intimidating to me. And she breaks it down and talks to you in just this really easy to understand way and, and talks about, you know, educates you on it and then, you know, gives you tips, which is basically, it doesn't matter what you do, put your money somewhere and start investing. That's the biggest thing to do. Start growing your wealth because starting early and investing is how you have money in retirement, how you, as she says, how you pay for your badass self, you know, when you, when you get old. So I did want to put it out there. I'm going to put a link for this video. If you are looking for something like that, if you are someone who is intimidated and, and you don't have to have like, you know, a significant amount of money to start off. And that is the other thing of this is like, I should have started investing more in my twenties, in my early thirties and, and doing some of this. Now I did it through work, which is great. And I do have it, but I, I could have done more. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's the importance we all talk about is, you know, start saving the, the weirdest thing that you get through, as a young adult is you literally have to start saving for your retirement. The minute you start working for 30 or 40 years down the road so that you can not work so that you can have the funds um, to enjoy retirement. So highly recommend her. It's her invested development by Amanda Holden. And, and I will put the link, her website and her Instagram. Um, I think she also just recently started doing YouTube videos and it's, it's just, it's great to take control of that part of my, you know, kind of my adulting as I'm calling it, you know, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually prepping today. I'm almost done with the course and I've been taking it. I think a course or so a week I've been listening and kind of thinking about it. And I think I have my investment strategy kind of all written out and I know what, um, uh, brokerage firm I'm going to go with. <laughs> and, um, in the next few days, I think I might actually, um, invest, which will be great. So if you're looking for adulting or if you're just starting out, even if you have debt or things like that, and you're just wanting to know how does, how does wealth creation in this country, you know, or, or overall work, because this is one of the major avenues of, of wealth creation is, you know, the stock market and mutual funds and that kind of finance part of the world. The other aspect is like real estate, which I'm not going into in Los Angeles. Yarn acquisitions. So last few years I backed a Kickstarter, um, called Ula and Leah. And it's this gentleman in, um, I think he teaches in Mongolia, but he is a U.S. citizen. And he started this Kickstarter a few years ago where he was going around to the herders and buying different fibers and then sending them to a mill in Mongolia and, um, and as part of the Kickstarter doing the yarn and I have knit a sweater with it, uh, his camel that I bought. And so I think it was my third year backing it. And so he's definitely, the yarns have gotten in terms of looking more professional looking. Um, but anyways, I picked up these yarns. I think they were like $70 or so for the four, but I have a dark Harbor blue and this is hundred percent baby wool. Um, baby camel wool from free range camels in Mongolia dyed this beautiful blue. And then I have Zenith blue and this is the hundred percent cashmere from goats. And I have a few of our cashmeres. Um, this one is hundred percent baby yak and this cool, awesome red. And I think this was his hundred percent sheep wool. So this is hundred percent wool in this dark blue. So I picked these up and I definitely already have some in my stash, including some cashmere, but I just got some different colors I didn't have. And so I, one of these days I will do this cashmere product. This doesn't, yeah, anyways. So he also sells his yarns online um, and you can find them on Ravelry in the link. It's Ula and Leah. Um, he's got a Facebook and Instagram and a Ravelry. And I think all of these I picked up were DK weights. Um, wanted to get away from fingering and get more DK. So that was my stash acquisitions. And honestly though, I mean, they came in last, you know, two weeks, but I backed the Kickstarter. I think it's like in March. So it takes a while. So he does it in March, has the money, buys the things, gets it, gets it all taken care of over the summer, um, summer into fall. And then, uh, 
it does take, well, it takes time to get it from Mongolia to the U.S. and then he mails it out from the U.S. Um, TV, I have been watching a Ghosts, the HBO original British version, which I love. It has one of the actresses that was on um, Called Midwives. So it is very funny. I'm almost through the third season. Uh, we started watching Righteous Gemstones, the second season of that on um, HBO. It's with Danny McBride and uh, Adam Devine and so and um, uh, the father from Roseanne. I'm blanking on his name. Anyways, over the top, kind of very funny, very punny, and yet stupid in a way. Like these Danny McBride plays. They play this character and like kind of a, a spoof on a like a large southern you know kind of these uber churches and they are like the family that gets, does it and the kids and taking over and they're just they're just over the top crazy crazy and it, it's very funny to watch um started watching all things great and small on pbs that's about J the life of james the stories from james harriet um based on his life and so it takes place in the midlands of the uk he, in the farm area and he's a doctor and it's very well done. It's the second season. So if you're a PBS where you get PBS, highly recommend watching that. And then we're also on PBS watching Around the World with 80 Days with the best doctor ever, David Tennant, which is great. Haven't really seen any movies and I'm up to 10 books already this year. Again, still reading um, the mystery series, the Book Lovers mystery series and uh the meg's Lanslow mystery series and something else and so i go through those in like three or four hours i can read the book it's potato chippy so yeah so that's that's good just that uh, i'm actually probably going to read a book i have one of the, the book lovers mystery series i'm reading right now so i'll probably finish that today um as for that as i said i'm just getting ready my mom is my mom and my niece are still supposed to be coming in february the end of february trying to figure out what we're going to do. Um, I think I'm going to take the whole week off of work to be with them, which I wasn't sure. And then I just have so much, I have so much vacation time. I'm like, you know what? I will just do it. Life will, they will be okay. Um, then the following week I go to Stitches West, which is awesome. And then like a month after that, it is Knockers 2022, which is still happening up North, which is great. I'm so excited. And then, um, the only, Definitely thing in my books is zombie and apocalypse in June. So yeah, time march marches on, life continues, travel will start soon, it'll be awesome. So that's pretty much all I have today. I hope everyone is having, if you have a three day weekend in the US, enjoy it. It's, I know that there's a crazy storm on the south in the, in the mid-Atlantic areas where they're getting snow and crazy things. I've got, I think blue skies and 60s. So sending you guys good weather, or maybe you like the snow in the rain. I know some people, some of my friends do love a good snow day. I personally, not so much, which is why I live in Southern California. Anyways, I hope everyone is well and had a happy new year and a good start to their new year. I'm feeling very, I'm feeling very optimistic at the beginning of this 2022, which is, which is a good feeling to keep. I'm hoping to it continues forward. Anyways, that's a wrap from Hollywood where fantasy meets fiber and dreams are knit. Till next time. Bye, everybody.